YouTube, it's Jurak Master, and um, I finally got my Hieratic deck out there for you guys. Um, this deck, it's got a pretty interesting playstyle. Um, it's a hard deck to make the right way. Um, luckily for us, the OCG has been doing it for a while. Um, there are plenty of things I want to do with this deck, and uh, not all of them just follow the OCG. In fact, I haven't even really looked at exactly how the OCG plays it. So, um, without further ado, let's get into this deck. First off, I'm running three Tefnuit, three Sue, three Eset, and two Nebthet. So that's it for the Hieratic Monsters themselves. Uh, pretty quick right there. Um, my normal monsters are Watt Tail Dragon and Luster Dragon number two. I run two Dark uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, two Card Card D, three Battle Fader, three Seal of Convocation. Two dualities, Monster Gate, Reborn, Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, and Book of Moon. Uh, just through the traps, Solemn Judgment, Two Solemn Warning, Seal of Reflection, Two Seal of Banishment, Two Compulse, and Two Bribe. That's the main deck. Um, I want to explain the extra deck just a little bit. Um, before I get into it, I want to say that this is not actually the extra deck. Um, for the most part it is. I'll tell you what changes there might be, but I can't make those changes now because I'm not running some of these things that uh, would make the ch mean that I had to make the changes because I don't have a side deck right now. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so the extra deck I have for this video has three Hieratic Dragon King of Autumn, um, three Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger, one Insector X Beetle, two Photon Strike Bouncer, three Force Focus, and three Exostag. Um, so, uh, what I want to explain about this is that the actual extra deck would not be exactly like this. Um, I would only have one bound, one Strike Bouncer, one Force Focus, and one Exostag, but that opens up quite a bit of room. Um, just for uh, like five more spots to have um, synchros or anything else that you might need based on uh, whatever else you might be running in your side. Um, Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, if you side the Cyber Dragons, uh, those could help you. And um, yeah, that's, that's just what the extra space is. I just decided I would fill it up for the purposes of the video. And, um, you could run this extra deck, it wouldn't hurt you. Uh, you don't even really need to side. I would at least side Veilers and run some Synchros in the extra deck. But, um, just for the purposes of this deck profile, I'm not going to have any of that stuff in there. Just because I don't want to have stuff that is based on the side deck and not have a side deck. Because I haven't worked out the side deck yet. Once I work it out, I'll get it to you guys. Um... So, I'm just going to break down the deck for you guys, um, just show you uh, some decisions I made and other stuff like that. So, first off, these guys are obvious, the Tefnuit and Sue, those are all uh, pretty standard at 3, same with Eset. Um, Nebset on the other hand at 2. Some people might not like them at all, some people might want them at 1, some people might want them at 3. Um, that's all up to you. 
Uh, it's just personally I like two. I'll explain that for just a second. Um, this guy at two, I like because you can ditch him from hand to activate effect the effect of Sue. Um, you can also use his effect if you really need to. Uh, you shouldn't, but you can. Say the opponent has like five-headed dragon, and uh, you need a way around that. Obviously, there's really nothing in your extra deck except for Exostag, but in that case, you still need uh, level fives to make him. Uh, well, never mind. I misspoke. I forgot Exabeetle was in here. Um, at first, I had accidentally left out Exabeetle, which is why I bring up examples like that. Um, so you really don't need his effect, but it can be helpful. Um, just an extra hieratic name, an extra tribute, uh, extra special summoning for uh, extra tributing and special summoning. Just helpful. Um, quickly, for those of you that don't know hieratics or haven't followed them, um, the two different uh, level 6 normals for the deck are in there because of stuff like Chain Disappearance. Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, um, for those of you who don't know the basics, uh, you bring him out off of this guy, and then special another person and keep the combos going. Just make more and more and more. Um, I like him at two. Three is unnecessary. You will never need three. Um, and, I mean, you don't, you might want a third at one point, but it would never really be necessary. Just drawing them is kind of bad. Um, you can play with it, but I'd rather just have them in the deck. Sometimes I like to have them in the hand. You can play with them from the hand, but I would prefer they just stay in the deck and I draw the Hieratics themselves. Um, so the two card cardies, as opposed to three, or just my choice in running them, is um, I only have two. That is part of it. I would probably play three if I had three, but um, the thing is, I would have held off on this video for another week and put in the third, uh, because I'll probably be able to get one by next week. But um, I like it at two. It's been playtesting well. Um, the deck, as I've made it now, covers itself well enough that I can afford to use Card Cardi's effect. Um, I've added in the Compulses, and I've got Warnings, I've got Solemn, I've got Book of Moon. Um, just all that kind of stuff. I've got the three Battle Fader now, a new addition to my build. Um, I'll cover him and some of the stuff he's good at in this deck in a minute. Um, card Card D speeds things up, but I don't think you need to uh, need to have three. You can. It will help you, but you can definitely get by with two. Two is a two is working very well for me. So um, I'm gonna skip over Fader for a second. I'll get back to him when I hit some other stuff. Um, the, uh, Convocations are obviously the Rota, so three is very, very good. Pretty much mandatory to have three. Um, two dualities is, uh, personal preference. Um, I've built the deck around such a way that I can play Card Card D pretty safely, and, um, I don't have to worry about so much not being able to go off in one turn, especially because the alternative is not drawing what I need and having to wait anyway and leave myself open that turn. So if it comes down to it, I'd rather activate card card D with nothing to defend myself than have nothing to defend myself and not get those two cards. So uh, same concept there applies to Pot of Duality. Um, skipping over Monster Gate for a second. Obviously, these three are staples, but um, Dark Hole is mainly for when you get outplayed after you've gone off and you still haven't won, um, or if they've got a lot of stuff and you can go off. Uh, it can just make it easier to win. Book of Moon is for defensive purposes, basically. Um, don't really use it other than that. So the Solemn's pretty obvious. Um, the One Reflection and uh, Two Banishment. Uh, basically, in this, I'm running Card Card Ds and Dualities, so I can't Special Summon them all, all the time. And um, 
I like to have these. They're good cards, um, especially because of the tributing to do what you need to do. But uh, overdoing them is definitely a problem, so uh, I like these. They're very good to have two, and uh, it's good to have this one just as an option if you should draw into it. Compulses for defensive purposes, once again, um, you can use them offensively if you want to compulse to get that extra boost for you uh, get rid of their monsters for game. Um, same with Book of Moon, by the way, when you get out Gaia Dragon since he pierces, but um, that's not the main point here. And then I've got two bribes also for uh, defensive purposes. The deck likes to go off, but since we don't have Gustav Max, it can be kind of hard to finish people off. Um, Gustav Max is the rank 10 for any of you who don't know. Um, basically, you get him out, he's 3,000 attack, and he's going to use his effect to do 2,000 damage the first turn he's out. So, um, effectively, he is basically just a 5-headed dragon that comes out by uh, overlaying your two um, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragons that likely have 0 attack, 0 defense anyway, and are just worthless on your field. So, um, that's why I have bribes. Or, well, I got off track, but the reason I had the bribes is because since I can't finish people off as easily, um, Dark Hole is definitely a problem. Some other cards as well. And um, after I've gone off, I probably won't have anything to use Seal with, and I can't rely on having Seal anyway. It's not enough. Um, now to get back to the Battle Faders that I skipped over. Um, as I've mentioned them, they help out because they let me safely duality... Uh, they let me safely card card D, but another thing is, when you have a bad hand as far as these guys go, like say you have two Sue, um, Sue with two of them in your hand and no way to get it out is just dead. Obviously, with this, you're looking to either have Eset along with Sue or Nebthet, or Tefnuit along with Sue or Nebthet, but if you don't, and you've just got Nebthet or Sue or whatever sitting in your hand, and you've got like two of them, uh, Battle Fader can save you for a turn, then you can tribute off the Fader, tribute this from your hand, activate his effect, and get your combos going that way. Um, so that's one reason Fader's in here. Fader also defends, so um, he can keep you going if you get Dark Hold. You can make a comeback. I've had that happen to me a few times because of Fader. And um, finally, he can be Monster Gated. Uh, Monster Gate, obviously, is just combo extension. And um, like, if you get stuck with just one asset, you can tribute it. The nice thing is, this thing's effect goes first. Um, so you finally, say you finally get to this. Uh, this is only for if you play the rank 8s. So say you finally get to this, you can special summon out the 6 and overlay. Or if you get the, um, once again, only if you play the rank 8s. Uh, if you get a different level, you can just bring out the uh, level 8 guy instead and um, work with that. But that's only for later if you get those guys. Um, good thing is, every monster in this deck can be normal summoned, so you can hit them. Uh, unfortunately, you might hit Battle Fader. That's just a risky run. But um, at that point, what do you have to lose? Um, <laughs> that's all I can say there. So that's about it for the main deck. I'm just going to cover the final few combos in here. Um, this guy, for any of you who don't know what he does, um, he just basically specials, but then he can't attack. So what you're going to do is overlay, and um, then he can attack and he's strong, and he pierces, and it's really nice to be able to do that to your opponent. So, um, that's pretty much the last combo. Obviously, he's in there to fix bad situations. He's in there to stop things from doing what they do. He's just a slightly stronger alternative that can, um, negate, kind of, I guess it does the same thing. It's basically a slightly stronger alternative, um, I mean, there's not too much around that. This guy's in there if you ever get in a situation where you need to make a rank 5. That way you can steal the opponent's monster. You can really run any rank 5s you want. It's just he's the only one I have, and uh, he does the job anyway. 
So that's my Hieratic deck. Um, I will be getting you guys other variants of this, updates on this one. Uh, this one, by the way, is the main build that I will be running whenever I run Hieratics, basically. Um, it's the main strategy that I will be using, the main setup, and um, pretty much the build I will use throughout my uh, my time playing Hieratics. I will tweak it, but this is basically the main setup. Um, the only difference is I'll bring you variants that will play like super heavy tributing cards and um, try to spam every single Hieratic it can, um, all of them making all levels. I could do I could do a rank eight and rank six making version that uh, will use both in the same deck, and I can make one that really just focuses on making the rank eights because uh, I know a lot of you guys out there will want to spam Heliopolis and Neo Galaxy Eyes and Thunder and Dragon, uh, all the really fun stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it for, um, for all that. That's the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got something out of the analysis. I know the deck itself ended like 12 minutes ago. So if you're still watching, I appreciate that you, uh, listened through this and, um, uh, you know, care enough about the deck to listen to my thoughts on it and, um, probably will hopefully benefit you in the, uh, the long run here. So, um, I appreciate you guys watching, and, um, I, I hope to get the next version of this out to you guys soon. I've got a lot of things I want to get done, and, um, things, my, my schedule's opening up a good bit, uh, soon, so, um, I will be starting my summer YouTube schedule again. So for any of you longer-term subscribers that remember me from last summer, um, I was putting videos out, like, every day, at least one a day. And um, I hope to get back to that again. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a nice day.